Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. My name is author Sherebim Joy, and I am so ecstatic to be here for this amazing opportunity to share in the 2020 Virtual Harlem Book Fair. A special um, acknowledgement and thank you to our host of this amazing event, Max Rodriguez. Thank you for having me. Also, a special thanks to Lynn Pender, who is the founder and CEO of Christian Authors on Tour, a wonderful organization that I am a part of. Again, I am truly appreciate this time that I have been allotted to share with you a little bit about myself along with my literary works. I am a Christian author. I write both fiction as well as nonfiction. I am also a children's book author. My first children's book, will be available in the next few months. For today's presentation, we're just gonna focus on those works that have already been published, and I'm going to start with my two fiction titles. My first Christian fiction book is entitled After the Benediction. I am very, very proud of this book and just excited about how well it has been doing. After the Benediction has won the 2020 Christian Indie Award, and I'm just humbled that I was chosen, or I should say my work was chosen to receive this honor. This has been my first award, so I'm quite excited about it. What's After the Benediction about? After the Benediction centers around J.C. Joyner. J.C. Joyner is an evangelist. J.C. Joyner was a pre-K kid. She was raised by her father, Bishop Lofton. Bishop Lofton taught J.C. the fundamentals of Christianity, as well as how to live holy. There was a lot of rules. There was a lot of regulations. She wasn't allowed to do a lot of things growing up because she was told that the hand of God was on her life. And yes, it was on her life. But as J.C. grows older, as a teenager, something terrible takes place. Her father, the bishop, the one that taught her to be who she is, found himself caught up in a scandal, a scandal that divided the church that he founded and pastored. It was a scandal that caused an irreparable or seemingly irreparable rift between J.C. and her father that will last for years to come. J.C. continues on in the ministry. She becomes an international evangelist. She has stood on platforms that many preachers would only dream of. Not unaccustomed for her to stand before tens and thousands on a weekly basis. JC's married. JC has a son. JC is a loved and admired and envied by many. It looks like she has it all together. But what people don't know about JC is that after the benediction, JC struggles with a severe case of depression to the point that she seriously considers suicide. JC blames what she went through with her father for her struggle. JC is considering walking away from the ministry and even walking away from God. She is blaming the things in her marriage and everything that she finds wrong about her husband. That's the problem. JC does not see herself as the problem until she is confronted by what I call an ordained spiritual eye. A spiritual eye from a woman of God that's not by any means intimidated by JC's title, her position, her popularity, none of that matters. This woman of God approaches JC and tells JC the truth. She tells JC what JC doesn't want to hear and JC is now at a place where she has to make a decision about what she believes. I encourage you to read this book. I wrote the book and I was convicted. I wrote the book and I had to repent. If you have been in the house of God or a part of the ministry for any amount of time, I encourage you to read this book. This book will teach you and cause you to do some introspection and to make you really ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Have I lost my passion? Have I lost my zeal? Did God really tell me to do this or am I doing what people said I had to do? This book will bring you to a place of closeness with God 
if you would allow it to. There's a lot of humor in the book. There's a lot of scandal in the book. But like I said, there's me, there's redemption in the book. And it will bless your life if you take the opportunity to read it. So please pick up a copy of After the Benediction. You won't be sorry. My second novel that I want to share with you this evening is Mima's Pretty Little Black Girls. If you love to pray or you know someone that loves to pray, if you had a praying grandmother, I encourage you to get a copy of Mima's Pretty Little Black Girls. Mima's Pretty Little Black Girls will encourage you to continue to pray, to persevere in prayer, to warfare on prayer, regardless of what it looks like. Many times we pray for our family and they grow up and they do the opposite of what we taught them and what we pray for. Such is the case in these five young women. They get involved in drugs. They get involved in all kinds of lifestyle. But Mima prayed. Mima was their grandma. Will Mima's prayers prevail over the lives of these children that she raised and labored over? Or will the enemy win? The only way for you to find out, because I'm not going to tell you, is you got to pick up a copy of Mima's Pretty Little Black Girls. Next, I would like to introduce you to my first Christian nonfiction work entitled Life Won't Wait. This book is encouragement and empowerment for single women that desire to be married, but may have found themselves at a place of discouragement, feeling as if God has forgotten about you and feeling as if this time of singleness in your life, that there is no purpose to it. I come to let you know today that's not true. I have some words of encouragement, empowerment to cause you to wait on God. I know you said I've been waiting for years, but I don't want you to lose patience in the waiting room. I don't want you to give up God in the waiting room. There's a chapter in here about the waiting room. This book will bless your life if you pick it up and read it or give it to a single Christian woman that needs just a little bit more encouragement and empowerment during this time of transition before God sends her the right one. My second nonfiction work is called Heart of a Woman, Motherhood, Marriage, Ministry, and Money. This book centers around encouraging women to find a place of balance in your life. Many of us, we wear, as they say, many hats. And in the process, we forget about ourselves. We don't take care of ourselves mentally. We don't take care of ourselves um, physically. We don't get our annual um, checkups like we're supposed to because we are so constantly pouring into others. This book will help you and remind you, don't lose yourself. Be the wife, be the mother, be the professional, be the preacher. God has called you to be the minister, but make sure you take care of yourself. It'll teach you how to pray for your children. It will teach you how to pray for your husband and not about your husband. There's a difference. If you want to know the difference, you need to pick up this book. It'll teach you how ministry is everywhere. It's beyond the pulpit. I I have examples. You need to pick up a copy of this book. And single ladies, I've got you in this book too. There's a special chapter for you that's entitled Walking Over Diamonds to Pick Up Glass. You don't want to settle and do that. Please, please don't do that. Also, it'll teach you before you say I do, understand the marriage vows. I break them down. So if you're thinking about saying I do single women, you need to read this book. Thank you all so much for your time today. I look forward to building an author and reader relationship with you. You can contact me anytime on my website at www.sherabimjoy.com. That information will be displayed once I have done my presentation and on all social media platforms. Again, thank you for this time and I look forward to a growing relationship with you.